Hello, my name is Allison Carmen, and welcome to my podcast, 10 Minutes to Less Suffering. And the name of today's podcast is Everything in the World Stressing You Out. And this came up for me the other day when I was watching CNN, and I was watching a clip of a young boy crying in a train as him and his family were leaving Ukraine to escape the violence of what's going on right now. And as I was watching this little boy cry, I was drinking this really beautiful cup of hot tea and eating a little piece of chocolate. And as I'm watching this young boy, I stop drinking and eating and I say, how can I possibly enjoy this cup of tea and eat this chocolate while I'm watching another human being suffer? How can I have any pleasure? How can I have any joy? How can these two things exist at the same time? And I remembered there was a talk that I heard from Wayne Dyer many years ago. And it was from his talk called The Secrets of the Power of Intention. Now, before I share it with you, I do have to say that Wayne was of the belief that your intention to feel good is what connects you to a higher energy, to source energy, to God, to Mother Nature, whatever you believe. And he also says that when you connect to that source energy, you go back to source that nothing could go wrong. He says you can't feel anything other than good when you're connected to source. And I struggle with this statement because I believe that life has pain in it, life has suffering in it, and it has joy and it has acceptance and appreciation has all these different things. And if I'm in pain or I'm worried, that doesn't mean I'm not connected to God, I'm not connected to source or mother nature or whatever I believe in. And if I'm sad, it doesn't mean that I'm not connected to a higher vibration, connecting to all that's good in the world. But what he says after he makes this comment, I do find very uplifting and very interesting. And I'm going to paraphrase it the best that I can. He says, I can hear people say, but how can I feel good? Look what's going on in the world. Look at this hostile place that we are in. Look at all the hatred. Look at all the drug abuse. Look at all the illness. Look at all the wars. Look at all the problems in my life. How can I feel good when there are so many people all over the world starving to death? How can I feel good when there's so much confusion in the world? How can I feel good when so many people are depressed? How can I feel good when my children are struggling? How can I feel good when my mother has cancer? How can I feel good when there's robberies? When I read every day about people hurting? And the list goes on and on and on about questions about how can I feel good? And what I want to say to you in response to that is that you can't feel bad enough to make anybody else's life better. And you can't feel sick enough to help one person get well on this planet. No matter how determined you are to be sick because of sickness that exists around you, there's no amount of you getting sick that can get one person well. And you can't get confused enough to unconfuse one person in the world. And you can't get sad enough to bring joy to one single soul on this planet. So no amount of your defending not feeling good does anything to make yourself or anyone else feel good. And then he goes on and says, it's such a difficult concept for many people to grasp that it's okay to feel good. When you are in harmony with source energy, you change everything around you. You could change the energy of your home. You can change the energy of your workplace that you can not only impact others in a positive way, but you can collect allies. You can just go around and begin to see this world as a friendly place rather than a hostile place. And like I said, although I take issue with the absolute nature of just being happy all the time and then life will go great. I think we all know that life is more complex than that. But he is right when he says you can't feel bad enough to make anything better. So the question is, how do we allow ourselves to feel and at the same time not sink and at the same time have hope and remain positive? Because we all want to feel good. We all want to add to the collective of a higher vibration. You all want to add to the collective of a better world, a more peaceful world, a more joyous world. But it's hard to do that when you're looking at death and destruction and a war and things happening in the world that don't agree with your morals and your values. But you can't feel bad enough to make the world a better place. So I thought a lot about this. I do think it's really important to bear witness to other people's suffering. There's something about witnessing people's suffering as part of being human, part of being kind and loving and respectful, and it's a part of humanity, that we not turn away, that we look at it, 
But it's also okay that we decide that we are going to lift our spirits up regardless of what we see. So yes, we have to feel what we have to feel, but we can't sink on behalf of ourselves or our families or our kids or the world or the people that need us because we won't have the strength and we won't have the resilience and we won't have the will to continue. So when I was drinking my tea and eating my chocolate, did I stop? Yes, I did. Then I finished the video and I said like a little prayer for the boy and his family and for Ukraine and I waited a while. But I did go back to my tea. It was a little colder, but I did go back to my tea and I finished the chocolate. And we've all had that. We're watching this horrible war and at the same time, we're going to dinner with friends. At the same time, we have to work. At the same time, we have to take care of our children. So we have to be able to fit all of this in one container and function and be okay. If we turn away, then we might not pray. If we turn away, we might not donate. If we turn away, we might not march in the streets. And if we turn away, we might not advocate for the differences and the changes we want to see in the world. But if we collapse because of the pain, because it's so awful what we see, and we let it take us down and we let it make us feel bad about everything, then we're not going to have the stamina that it takes to move on. And we all know this. We all know when we go through hard times, how we show up for it makes all the difference. And I know this is true because when I feel good, I'm more likely to take inspired action because I do feel connected to source. I do feel connected to a higher energy level. And if I get into a room and I have to inspire other people, I will. And you can do the same. You just have to keep remembering over and over again You can't feel bad enough to make the world a better place. And that takes away my guilt and it allows me to let go. After I've taken inspired action, after I've done my best to help whatever I chose to do, and then I take care of my life. I take care of my children or I take care of my job or I take care of something else. And I truly believe that my joy and my passion and my inspiration, whatever I do, is a deposit into the world. And I know I spoke about this last week, but we deposit things into the world, peace, love, harmony, kindness. So if we're just feeling bad, we're not doing that. But if we try to feel good, if we intend to feel good, I think that we're going to have an easier time making changes in the world. And we also have a right to enjoy our lives when we can, moment to moment. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen next week. So when the moment is in front of us, we need to take that moment. And if in that moment in front of us is joy and there's opportunity and there's pleasures, then we should take those moments. But what I love about those moments is sometimes those moments lead to inspiration or deep gratitude or they add to our lives in such a way that we have more space to help others or make a difference or Like I said last week, deposit peace into the world through our own feelings. Whatever it is, we need to stay strong and resilient. And remember that statement. We can't feel bad enough to make the world a better place, but we can feel good enough. And that's the point of this podcast, that if we feel good, if we can get there, then that good will raise vibrations. That good will make a difference. That good will make impact. That feeling good can make the world a better place. And at the end of the day, that is what Wayne Dyer was trying to say, that if you want to help the world and you want to help your family and you want to help the people at work and you want to help your friends and you want to make a difference, how you feel every day is part of it. So it doesn't mean hold in your feelings. It doesn't mean don't process your pain and your suffering because that's all real. But there's a point when we start to linger or there was a point when we only allow suffering and we don't allow joy. So we have to be careful to allow ourselves to feel things, but we can prevent ourselves from sinking and we can pivot and we can offer ourselves different perspectives and we can lift ourselves up. And when we do that, we can lift others. Thank you for listening to this podcast today. If you'd like to get in touch with me, you can email me at allison at allisoncarmen.com. 
If you'd like to buy my books, The Gift of Maybe or Year Without Men, they're available at all major bookstores and online retailers. And if you like this podcast, you could subscribe and leave a comment.